What is going on my favorite skiers and snowboarders? Today's video is gonna be a super quick one and I just wanna run you through all the steps you should take at the end of the ski season to store your gear properly. So the first thing you wanna start with is your outerwear. For most of us skiers and boarders, we wear a jacket and pants. I know some legends still rip in the jeans. It's pretty sexy. Most of us wear some sort of waterproof or relatively waterproof jacket and pants combo over the course of season jacket and pants get super dirty maybe you spill hot sauce on them maybe you get dirty oils and the dirt make the waterproofing work less well all you need to do super simple is wash it with some sort of gear specific tech wash i always use nick wax or you can use another one i've used this as well called grangers it really doesn't matter find a gear wash read the instructions on the back of the gear wash and then read the care label on your gear Mix those two together and you're gonna have freshly waterproof gear. The next thing I always like to do is to just take a good long look at your helmet. So look at your helmet, you know, check it out for any dings, any dents that may have occurred. Um, with a helmet, if you have any serious dents, if you see any cracks, anything weird going on, you're probably gonna have to end up getting a new helmet and that's okay. You always wanna keep your cranium, your brain protected. And if your brain bucket has any sort of flaws, it's time to get a new one, or if it's been five years, this Smith Vantage helmet is ready for next year. For your goggles, just make sure your goggles are dry. Same thing like after every ski day. Remove your lenses, make sure they're dry after your last ski day. Once they're dry, make sure you put your goggles into a ski case. I always keep my goggles in a goggle case, plus I use one of these goggle socks. You may have seen them before. Some people like to store their goggles with their goggle socks on, on their helmet. I actually use my goggle sock inside my goggle bag. So what I do is I put a goggle sock over my main lens, and then I pop that into my goggle bag, and then I pop my secondary lens into the goggle bag, and that goes into storage. I also do that after every ski day. The reason why I have the goggle sock in there is because I don't want the goggles themselves to scratch on each other over time. So we got, you know, dual protection in the goggle bag. Goggle bag's good to go. Usually I like to keep the goggles stored inside the helmet so they don't crack when I pack them away into a bin. Ski boots. Not too much you have to do ski boots, but there's one very important step to boot care. Here we've got a set of boots. The first thing I'd always do before you pack them away is make sure the outside of your boot's clean. Just check out the shell. Make sure there's no dirt and salt and grime locked into here. Keep them clean. They're gonna store much better and there's gonna be less deterioration over time. The number one thing with ski boots that you cannot do when you store them over the winter is to put them away wet. Like after every ski day, make sure those liners are out. So after every ski day, I take my liners out, make sure all your straps are loose. You grab the back. I think this would be called the tongue, I think, of the boot. And you pull it out forward, your liner pops right out. And then take out your insole to make sure everything is dry. The reason you wanna take out the insole as well is there could be some moisture between the insole and the boot, which can create nasty smells or can create uh, more bacteria growth. There's a couple methods you can use for drying your boot. For instance, say you don't have a boot specific dryer, just angle it on your electric dryer in your house. That's what I always used to do. The second method I used to dry my boot is called a dry guy heater. It's these little orange heaters I bought on Amazon. I think they're like 25, 30 bucks. They pop into my boots, they're super portable. I take them everywhere with me, especially wherever I go skiing. I pop them inside my boots, plug them into a wall socket, and my boots are dry and ready to go the next day. If you have an industrial heater, like the ones my parents have in the garage here, this one's called the, uh, the All Sport and Work. Uh, I think this was on Amazon as well. This can hold four pairs of boots at once. Run the boot heater, make sure they're dry inside and out. Keeping those beautiful boots bone dry is the most beneficial thing you can do for your ski boots over the winter. So once they're fully dry, put everything back together, get that insole back in, get your liners back in. And as per usual, you're gonna be tempted once again to throw them into the garage, throw them into the basement. Don't do that. You see this? Never store your boot with the buckles undone, okay? Why? Because if your buckles are undone, this plastic is gonna warp over time and it's gonna get ugly. So what you always wanna do and you always wanna make sure is your boot buckles are all clipped up. You can keep them on the lowest setting. The goal here is to just make sure everything is clipped up so the plastic doesn't warp. Make sure you get that power strap as well. The boots are dry, the buckles are done up, and these bad boys 
are ready to go into the storage bin. Now it's time for the skis. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with your skis requires a flathead screwdriver. And even if you're not gonna do any of the other steps, I at least recommend you do this one. Loosen down your din setting and those springs in your bindings. So your bindings are always under tension because of that din setting, which is the release mechanism for your boots. So you don't want them sitting away all winter when they're not working, tightened up as you know as tight as a banjo string. So what we're gonna do is simple. We're gonna loosen them right down until the tension goes down to zero and, and we're gonna leave them. Just make sure you write down what your din setting was set to so you can set it back to the same setting before you get on the hill next season. And make sure you don't forget to set it next season because that could lead to a lot. I'll show you how you can lower your din. It's very, very simple. You got a screw on the top and you got a screw on the side. Typically the din is this screw on the side. So I'm gonna put the camera down so I can get that one for you guys here on the side. And basically all you're gonna do is loosen it off. So. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. I got mine really cinched. All right, get it kind of down to about zero there. It's what you do to the front, you gotta do to the back. On the back, the din setting adjustment is just this big honking thing right here. Same thing, stick it in, and you're gonna turn to the left. You can see the din is that little guy. Maybe you can't see it. It's right inside there, you can see the number. But twist her down all the way until she's down to zero. The one really important step you don't wanna forget after you loosen your dins is to write down what your din was at. I keep it simple, I just write all the dins on the wall. Same as your boots, you wanna make sure your bindings are clear of debris. So take a cloth, wipe off your bindings, wet cloth, whatever. Once you get your din settings all torqued down, the next thing I'd recommend is to repair any edge or base damage so you can tune your edges completely if that's what you wanna do, or you can wait till next season. Tuning edges can honestly be done by anyone with a little bit of practice and the right gear. When it comes to base repairs, those are even easier. All you need to do is buy a little stick of P-Tex, melt it in to whatever area on your ski it needs a little bit of fixing. If you wanna learn a little bit about how to tune and edge your skis, I got a written guide on the Ryzen Alpine website. And the final thing everyone should do to their skis before you put them in storage is to put a storage wax on your bases. Applying storage wax is no different than regular waxing. The only thing different is you don't scrape it off. I recommend using your cheapest wax that you have. There are specific storage waxes. It doesn't really make a difference. Basically grab the cheapest, crappiest, most random wax you have. It's gonna keep your bases hydrated over the summertime. When it comes next season, you scrape it off, you're ready to go, or you can scrape it off and put a fresh wax on whatever you feel like. If you wanna learn more about waxing, I got a full video right here on my channel and you can learn about how to wax step-by-step -step in video. After the storage wax, let it dry, you're good to go. Pop them into storage. Alrighty guys, it's as easy as that. Now you know how to store your ski gear properly for the summertime. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and informative and I can't wait to see you on the slopes next year. Keep on tuning in for sweet summer content until the next ski season arrives. Keep on shredding. I'll see you next time.